Hey, this is Brian Trifon, also known as Trifonic, and I'm really excited to be here to give you a walkthrough of my company, Finishing Moves, first software instrument for contact called PostHuman. PostHuman is a simple to use instrument for creating evolving, beautiful pads and emotional textures. At its core is an XY square that allows you to seamlessly crossfade between four different sounds. It also allows you to record, edit, and loop your crossfade path, which allows you to create textures that evolve over time. PostHuman comes with 50 patches that I designed, and in each patch, there's four sounds, one sound loaded into each corner of the XY square. The real magic starts to happen when you create a crossfade path between the sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and pull in this preset here, and let's see what this sounds like. So you can see as I'm holding down this note, the cursor in the XY pad transitions from marker one to marker two, and then so on all the way to four. And then you can see it, it looks like it's going back to one, but it's actually going to marker five, which is in the same location as one. So it's, it's just out of view at the moment. What's cool about this uh, crossfade path is that we can edit it or we can go ahead and record a new one. We can change the speed of how fast uh, it's going through the crossfade path. So there's a lot we can do with it. But first, what I wanna do is just show you the individual sounds in each corner of this patch. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the path button. And what that's gonna do is turn off the pre-recorded path. So you can see the markers are no longer visible anymore. And I just have the cursor and I'm gonna drag it down to corner one. Let's hear what that sound sounds like. So you can hear this sound has sort of a string type quality to it. It evolves over time get some interesting qualities to it. All right, and if we go to the second corner here, let's check out this sound. It's more distant sounding. And if we go ahead to corner three and listen to that sound, this one sounds more like a traditional Japanese reed instrument. And if we go over to corner four over here, this is a guitar sound. So what I can do is just drag around the cursor freely and transition between uh, these sounds. Okay. So now that we've heard what each sound that's assigned to the four corners sounds like, uh, let's turn back on the crossfade path and we can talk about some more features. So right now we have the retrig button on. Um, and so what that does is that means that each voice that I play, it will retrigger the crossfade path. Um, so I'll go ahead and play a note. And then when I add in a second note, you see that the crossfade path restarts. Um, and actually for the first note that I'm still sustaining, it's continuing on the crossfade path, like it's full journey, it doesn't restart. Um, but for the second voice, it starts over. So it's pretty cool. So each note that you're playing has its own crossfade journey. If I go ahead and press the retrig button again to turn it off, now what happens when I play a note, the crossfade cursor starts through its path and I play a second note and it continues on, so it doesn't restart. So that's what the retrig button does. So one thing that we might wanna do next is record our own crossfade path. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the record button. And so what's gonna happen is when I press a note on my MIDI keyboard, it will start recording the crossfade path. So I can use my mouse to uh, move the crossfade cursor around, or I can use a MIDI controller. Um, and we'll talk about how to assign that later. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a note and then drag around the crossfade cursor and uh, we'll record a path. So now when I let go of the note 
it will stop recording. So if we play a note and listen back to the crossfade path that we recorded, you can see it goes all the way through um, markers one through five, and then when it gets to the end, it goes back to one. Now sometimes that can be kind of jumpy. If, if uh, the marker number five is a little ways away from marker one, you get a big change of sound very quickly. Um, so that's what the connect button is for. What that does is it moves marker five back to marker one so that when the crossfade path loops, it's a seamless transition. Another thing that you might wanna do is adjust the rate at which it's playing back through the crossfade path. That's what the path rate knob is for. At zero, the path rate knob is playing back through the crossfade path at your original recorded speed. If I move it to the right to a positive number, then it's playing back faster. If I move it to the left to a negative number, it's playing back slower. So we have our cool recorded path. We've adjusted the speed. The next thing you might want to do uh, potentially is edit your path. Um, so I'll press the edit button and this allows me to move nodes one through five around to different places if I want to just create something different than what I recorded. And then we take it out of edit mode, play it back, and you can see now it's following the edited path. The only other features on this main page that we haven't talked about yet is we have a delay send knob. So that just adjusts the amount sending to the delay. Um, we have a volume knob, which by default is assigned to the mod wheel or CC1. And uh, then we have attack and release, which is an overall attack and release for the entire patch. Um, so, you know, you want a long release to the sound, you crank up the release, very simple, self-explanatory. Down at the bottom right, we have an advanced button. That takes us to a second page where we can adjust the delay parameters and set MIDI controllers. So we have the same delay send knob that we had on the first page. And then we also have you know, the delay time, delay dampening, panning, feedback, so on. Down at the bottom, you can see there's a MIDI CC knob. And to the right of that, there's a drop down menu. So here's where we can assign the X and Y direction to MIDI controllers and to actually pretty much all the other parameters to MIDI controllers. All you do is adjust the MIDI CC knob um, and there it is, it's set. For any MIDI parameter that you have set, you wanna make sure that the active button is engaged. If it's not, then it won't output that MIDI CC. The reset button resets the MIDI CCs to their defaults for this instrument. To go back to the main page, press the main button. Let's check out a different patch. As you can hear, Posthuman is capable of some really cool, unique, and emotional textures. I'm really proud of this instrument. Thank you so much for watching the walkthrough, and I hope you enjoy Posthuman.